Some of you might be interested that my uh, website is back up. I'm going to connect a link in the description box below. You can hit the website uh, to get, it, it was hacked, it was hacked about six, six months ago. It may have been just one of those things where uh, a kid in the basement did it, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's back up again and it uh, looks fabulous. And uh, I wanna just make a, a few updates, some comments. And this has to do with art. I've linked my YouTubes to the website as well. And I'm still uh, going to discuss it with uh, my web uh, designer who's brilliant. I love uh, the work he does. And uh, I'm going to attach specific YouTubes, I think, more toward the art side of things. Uh, not entirely. I'm going to include, obviously, the, the epic catastrophe at Fukushima in, the, in most of the uh, YouTube videos that I'm going to do. So I, I want to update one thing, and this has primarily, it's an art comment. I want to make about the art that I produce, the art that I make, and how it fits into the scheme of things. Well, it's, it's something that to me seems just perfectly natural to be able to express one's uh, ideas, thoughts, emotions, the spirit uh, of our nature in the work that we do that is called art. And I have always said that the artists that are of significance to me and uh, the artists that matter to anyone would be the artists that capture the time in some way. Are they just merely entertainers and producing spectacle? We can get that anywhere. People can produce spectacle and brilliantly. I think this is something that is very creative as well on every level. You can create spectacle, but does it matter? especially at a time when, as I have said, we are under threat. And the gatekeepers of deception want to make sure that the art that represents the time we're in isn't in the public domain or is suppressed as it always has been. Systems are set up, culture is set up to suppress that voice in humanity among people that expresses the time because as we become aware of the time, we recognize that the system we function in is predicated primarily on deception because people benefit. There is this twisted, weird notion that you can get away with one, you'll get away. You'll, you know, run away, run away, Monty Python, run away. We're sort of part of the infinite pain society as far as I'm concerned, when you look at culture, it's kind of like the infinite, not plain, but pain society. And I want to just now uh, synopsize an idea I had that some people may not know. I've put this on every video underneath to make a free radical video. This was a, this was a, a little program that I wanted to introduce, and it's not being... Uh, it's not being followed up on. There have been maybe 30 or so videos produced. I thought it would be more videos people would be interested in adding their voice to the idea of the free radicals. And I want to just explain the free radical idea in connection with the age of fission. And it's a quick synopsis of where it comes from and what I think is significant about this. And like any artist, like I say, the artists that matter identify the time. And I've said that we now live in the age of fission. I have called this the age of fission. And the free radicals were started with a friend of mine. Uh, I'm not, I, I was a bit of an itinerant kind of uh, morph, morphosis of our thoughts and our actions uh, in collaboration with each other. Com we communicated, we cooperated, we put shows on and we developed this idea of the free radical together. And I think it was started more or less in 2010. Now the free radical in the, in, in the scientific sense, those, those elements within our bodies that create aging and illness and disease are very curiously functioning like fission, the fission process that what I say, the age of fission, started in 19, began in, uh, fundamentally began in 1938, when the idea of splitting the atom became part of the most practiced 
the most ubiquitous type of science for all of for all of what is considered to be the developed world. We have now over 450 nuclear plants with multiple reactors, research facilities. So from a scientific point of view, if you consider technology to be sort of the, the, the guiding light of our advancement, of our brilliance, in 1938, Strassmann Hahn and Lise Meitner, she should be included, there was a woman included who was involved in developing, inventing this technology that is sinking, sinking our ship, sinking our good ship. Now some may say, let, let this sucker sink, let this sucker sink, except that a lot of life is going to be sunk with it. So I just want to synopsize the idea of this concept, as in any age, the artists that matter identify the age we're in and produce the work that is significant to the time we live in. And the free radical are an expression of that in terms of my work. That in fact, the, 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 uh, the medical explanation of a free radical is, is fundamentally that it is an atom or even a molecule that has a loose electron. Electrons supposedly, I'm just going to use scientific explanation whether or not it's true or not. I'm just going to use this explanation because it makes sense. Even if it wasn't true, it still makes sense in the way we are experiencing reality at this time. And the idea of a free radical is elements in our body that are losing, that have lost an electron and are very capable of uh, pulling an electron off another molecule. And quite often this happens on cells, the covering of cells is some sort of a lipid, lipide, I don't know what, what it's called, it's like a membrane on a cell that is destroyed by these free radicals and the cell must be balanced and intact to do all its exchange mechanisms of nutrients and excretions and all those things. When they're broken down, we no longer are able to function. And the free radicals, the free radicals are those elements in our bodies that break down our balanced functioning. And, it, and it's a chain reaction. Get this, the free radicals are a chain reaction. Just like a nuclear fission reactor is a chain reaction. And once it starts, it can't be stopped. Once this electron exchange thing begins, it's like it bombards these free radicals, enter the system and uh, pull electrons or their uh, other electrons, bombard other electrons off. And anyway, it's a chain reaction, the, the way I under understand it. So isn't this quite... Uh, Without having thought about this, this is quite fabulous that, you know, I was able to somehow zero in intuitively on this uh, medical, the medical side of things. Obviously, the physical world, what we consider to be the functioning world out there, has manifested itself in a large context through nuclear, the fission, nuclear fission, and on an inner side, the version of nuclear fission are the free radicals. So when I talk about art and the catastrophe at Fukushima is the jewel in the crown of this technology having malfunctioned completely. Not that it ever functioned in any reasonable way because the waste produced this chain reaction that keeps on going for thousands and thousands of years, producing exotic isotopes that we don't know what to do with. It's garbage. It, it has no value to anyone other than the people that are trying to destroy, trying to sink the goddamn ship. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that right now. I just wanted to tie these loose ends for myself and people that are interested that the idea of the free radicals in the age of fission are uh, beautifully, elegantly connected within the concept of this chain reaction happening outside and inside. So the, the work that uh, is represented by the free radicals represents this insight and understanding by not just myself, where I would like to bring in the people 
what I call people of conscience, not just people of conscience, but creative people, artists, who are able to understand this, the nature of our circumstances in their way. I have my way of seeing it. Other artists have their way of seeing it, and they produce work that represents this fundamental fact. We're under this umbrella of an age that I have called the age of vision, where the free radicals represent the inner, the inner world, I talk about the inner world, it's, it's a little bit of a, I'm playing with this because the inner world that I re reflect on isn't so much the, the functioning of our organs and the free radicals and systems and chemical reactions, it's an inner spiritual world. And I think the two are actually quite connected, but this is a whole other dissertation, I suppose. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to update the fact my website's back up again. And uh, I just reflected on the free radicals in the time that we live in and uh, how, do we, how do we overcome this. And I think just as a final note, what I'd like to say is there are certain concepts that we live with. For example, I've, I've, really, uh, I've really trashed the idea of truth. All the truthers out there, I, I find this quite insidious actually because truth is a very moving target all the time. So you, you can expound a truth, and then as you become more enlightened, you adapt uh, or adopt other truths. I mean, this is something that happens all the time. And I, you know, when I think about this, I much prefer a, uni a universality. What is, and, and people think about truth as being universal, but it's not. I've explained this in other videos. Go back to other videos where I talk about this, that truth is actually quite a moving target. It changes with the times as well. So the idea of a universality, what I connect to more, I say, is honesty. And honesty is something that uh, exists kind of like a pregnancy. You either are or you're not, whereas truth could or could not be. So the idea of an honesty is a universality. So truth is not the same as a universality the way it's understood by most people. In the, in, as, a, as an opposition to truth, I would say, I would say honesty uh, connected to conscience uh, comes in this idea as well. And the idea of a theory, let's say everybody wants to have a theory or believe in something. Uh, the function of our cosmos, of how everything works, is basically explained by theories. But what is more, uh, in terms of this function being explained, I quite like the idea of a part within us, again, that inner world, that functions based on conscience to do the right thing. And we don't necessarily always know the, uh, uh, the nature of this mystery, it, which is why people like to attach themselves to theories. But I prefer the idea of functioning within conscience. I, I hope you kind of connect the, the, the sort of thought process I have in this. And finally, the idea of uh, all, all culture seems to be predicated on belief systems or faith all of that stuff, and and I find that so in cities. I, I have referred to it as the culture of death, and you know, going down, going down with the ship, the culture of death. I really quite find it difficult to function in any way without having hope. And belief and faith destroys hope. I'm convinced of this. Belief and faith, again, it's something that is a moving target uh, in in a certain way. It's 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 kind of on the side of truth. So I feel more connected. Uh, to the way uh, my experience, day-to-day -day experience, is much more meaningful to me if I have a hope. We all need to function with a level, uh, degree of hope in any kind of way. We can't actually accomplish anything without hope. So a, a quick synopsis, that's it. That's all I got today. And uh, my website's up again. I'm excited about it. And it's not quite finished. Uh, still work to be done on it, but uh, you can check me out again on the website.